Hi, welcome to Low Vision Living 2070. I'm Kathy. I do have low vision, even though I am wearing glasses. I see around 2070 to 2080, depending on the day. Allergies and that kind of thing affect my vision. And so um, that's one of the things I'm gonna be struggling with now from now on for the rest of the year. It is getting to be allergy season. Um, and then I found out from going through the vocational rehab services and they gave me some websites to look through and that kind of thing that um, visually impaired low vision is considered from the time that your vision is 2060 up until your vision is 2180. Once you get past that 2200 with glasses you are considered legally blind. So I am in the the low vision category which I knew that but I didn't know the, the technical definition of it. But as I've gone back through my paperwork and that kind of thing, because I had to get everything together for my meeting that I had last week with the vocational rehab um, intake process, I've actually technically been low vision since 2000. It is now 2022, so that's 22 years. I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew that my vision wasn't good, but I really didn't. Um, think about it. I didn't know that there was a such thing as low vision, which is part of the reason why I'm, I'm doing these videos so that people do know that um, there is a classification for being visually impaired and it does make you eligible for some services that you wouldn't think of having. And so you need to be an advocate, advocate for yourself or for a loved one and look into these things and see what you can find out. Um, every state is probably a little bit different on how they handle things and that kind of stuff. Um, when I was going through the intake, intake process, I had some information that I had had to fill out and that kind of thing. And as I was going through their criteria, I thought, oh, well, I'm not really eligible for a lot of this stuff because I don't have issues. But um, let me read to you what it, the criteria does say. There's six or seven criteria that they look at, and they are um, communication, interpersonal skills, mobility, self-care, self-direction, work skills, and work tolerance. So I thought, okay, well, you know, that that I don't really have trouble with a lot of that stuff. I mean, I can communicate. I have interpersonal skills and that kind of thing, but... What she told me, and I didn't realize until I actually thought about it after she told me, that if you are visually impaired, one of the things, well, a couple of the things that they consider for services is the communication and interpersonal skills. Because, you know, we are visual individuals and we rely on that a lot for body language and that kind of thing and just somebody talking to you or looking at you or whatever and so there's a good possibility I have missed some communication cues and that kind of thing and so also with the interpersonal skills you know I may miss somebody waving at me or something like that or somebody trying to get my attention and that kind of thing so those are two things that that I'm actually eligible for services through because I do have issues with that. I don't recognize people a lot of times unless they're they're fairly close to me. And so I know I've said before, I've had people wave at me and that kind of thing and I didn't see them or I didn't see them until they were waving. And then I would see them because I was focused on them. Um, there's a lot of visual clutter in my world um, just because everything kind of blends together after a certain point. It's hard to explain that to people. Um, one of the things I guess I've tried to explain to people is it's like putting out a, a jigsaw puzzle. You just, you know, dump it out on the table and the pieces are upside down and right side up and they're just all jumbled up. And so you have to sort through them to get your picture to form. And that's kind of what I have to do. And uh, even though things are not jumbled up in that manner, you know, with everything going every which way, there's still, a, after a certain point, I just don't see a lot of the details that help most people be able to recognize objects and people and that kind of thing quickly because I just don't see them. 
and after having my glasses for um, about a month, a little bit over a month, I have realized that there's a lot of things that I have missed um, that I just didn't realize because it has been so long since I've had some vision issues that I've just forgotten. You know, the way things look and that kind of stuff. And so it's just kind of weird. And, and nobody that sees on a normal way or in a normal capacity um, really understands that. It, it's just really hard to, un, to, to be able to explain to someone who does not have a vision issue. If I explain that to somebody that had a vision issue, they say, oh yeah, hey, that sounds really familiar. That's kind of like what I do too. So it's just kind of been an, literally an eye-opening experience to go through some of these things and realize that, okay, I do have a disability. I have never considered myself as being disabled because I can still do stuff. But um, having a disability is not necessarily based on whether or not you can do something. It's kind of more based on the difficulty that you have doing something or that kind of thing. So it has been interesting to go through this process. Um, I will be waiting probably another couple weeks, could be up to a month or a month and a half before they tell me exactly what my eligibility is. And I will get a counselor at that point in time if I am eligible for services. And we will sit down and go through things in a little bit more detail because it's somebody who specializes in helping people who are visually impaired. And so I'm sure that they will have some things for me that I have never thought of. Um, I know that you can um, get computers and that kind of thing that are specifically for visually impaired people that can, um, you can adjust the font a lot more. You can adjust the colors and that kind of thing a lot more. Um, so I am looking forward to that and just, you know, seeing what's available because I literally have no idea. So that's part of that process that I'm going through. And then um, the other thing that I found interesting when I was talking to the, the lady who did the first um, intake session going through and collecting all my information and that kind of thing, she said I was very well prepared with all my information for her as far as tests that I'd been through and getting the, the diagnosis through a genetic test and that kind of thing. And I said, well, I've had to prove to people that I am visually impaired to be able to get some accommodations at work, like having a larger screen on my computer and that kind of thing. I also had the ability to change the colors on my uh, screen. A lot of people could not do that. Um, that function was disabled on their computers. But since I do better with a different background color and different font color than people with normal vision, they gave me the ability to be able to change those colors. And that did help a lot. One, the, the program that I used, it had a black background and green font, and that just does not work very well for me. It just, it's very hard to look at and be able to read. So I was able to change background colors and font colors and that kind of thing. So, but I have had to prove that to people. And once, um, you know, I did. The IT guy was, oh, hey, let me get whatever you need. And, um, but they have to. So, you know, that's just something else to think about. If you do have a visual impairment and you are struggling at work and you do have proof that you are low vision, they have to give you accommodations. They have to. So if you or someone you know is struggling with that, then by all means, check with your eye doctor, check with your eye specialist, whatever it is, and um, get your documentation, take it to your workplace, um, HR, and tell them, look, I am visually impaired and I would appreciate you getting the accommodations that I need to be able to function more efficiently. So, and if you put it that way, maybe they'll be a little nicer about it. But again, it's something that they have to do. So, um, just some, some things to think about. So I will update you as I find out more information about my vocational rehab stuff and just see where that takes me. Thanks. Have a great day.